Hello everyone and welcome to my review and demonstration of this Dyson V6 cordless vacuum cleaner. During the course of this video I'm going to see how well this Dyson picks up pet hair and more general dirt on carpet, also how well it cleans hard floors, how convenient it is to use and also I'll give you a few maintenance tips towards the end of the video. But before I start I'll just explain what comes in the box. You'll need to charge it for approximately three and a half hours before your first use. It does have some charge to it, but I would recommend giving it a thorough charge before you use the machine. Now you can charge it using the supplied wall bracket. You need to fix that to the wall and this will store and charge your cleaner at the same time. And you can also store two of the accessories as well that come complete with this cleaner. You can also charge it directly. You've got the charging adapter here. You can actually plug it directly into the machine. There's a little port at the back. So you can put that on your kitchen worktop, say, charge it near a suitable socket so you don't actually have to use the supplied wall bracket. When you're charging the cleaner, the light at the bottom of the handle will illuminate blue and then turn off when it's fully charged. If it illuminates amber, it means it's not charging because the battery is either too hot or too cold. So you need to either let the machine cool down or move it into a warmer place before attempting to charge again. If the light flashes red, it's not charging and you need to contact the Dyson helpline. These are the two cleaning tools that came standard with my particular Dyson. The rigid crevice tool and the combination tool with a brush that pops out like that. So you can use it with the brush out for your dusting and then retract the brush and you've got a small nozzle here for cleaning your upholstery and your curtains. This is the motorized cleaner head that has two sets of brushes, very soft carbon fiber brushes, which are designed to pick up even fine dust from your hard floors and stiffer nylon brushes to clean your carpets. And finally, you get the lightweight aluminum wand that enables you to clean up high to reach cobwebs, etc., as well as cleaning your carpets and hard floors without stooping or bending. Now I've set up a little bit of a torture test for the Dyson V6 on my living room carpet. I have a square here of pet hair. This combines long hair miniature dachshund hair with some golden retriever hair. And some of you may have seen a quick video I did of a Dyson DC40 attempting to pick up this particular black hair and it did struggle with it. So it'd be interesting to see if this V6 does any better. Once I've tested it on the pet hair, I'll be using the Dyson V6 on this general dirt. So we've got quite a lot of dust, there's bits of paper, there's more pet hair, um, little bits of rolled oats, other, other bits and pieces that I've used in various vacuum demonstrations. So without any further ado, let's concentrate on the pet hair pickup first and then we'll move on to the general dirt. In both demonstrations, I'm going to use the Dyson V6 on its regular setting as well as maximum mode. So I'm going to use the machine this side on regular setting followed by this side on maximum to see if it makes a difference. Okay, starting with the machine on regular. Okay, not bad, but not very good either. It seems to have removed all the golden retriever hair, but that black hair, that's very tenacious. A lot of vacuum cleaners fail with that, but of course that was on its normal setting. So we're going to need to give it a bit of a boost. This is an extreme example, of course. So on this side, I'm going to try again, but this time with the Dyson on max mode. Certainly an improvement, but with two passes, it has still left quite a lot of the hair. But as you can see, max mode has made a lot of difference between the two passes. Okay, I'm just gonna pass it over again on max mode a few times, just to see if we can get a thorough clean. It's still struggling. I'm not surprised because the Dyson DC40 did struggle. I'm not sure if it picks up on camera. Obviously it looks a lot better than it did before, but 
It took quite a few passes to get the dirt up. Obviously, I've done an extreme example. But it's not bad, it's certainly better than the Dyson DC35 that I tested a while ago on my channel. Okay, so it's all right for pet hair, as long as you haven't got a load of it like this. Time to go over to my other square of dirt and see how well the Dyson performs on regular mess. So again, I'm going to do one side on regular setting and the other side on max mode. Now that's pretty good. As I said, that's on regular. It's cleaned more or less everything. I can't really see any dirt there, but there may be some dirt that's a bit, a bit small. But still, considering that was on its regular setting, which uses 20 minutes, you've got 20 minutes of runtime on regular, it's done quite a good job. I mean, a very good job. But we're just going to compare, just to see if we can get any improvement at this side using maximum. Okay, let's line it up. Yes, it's a definite improvement. I could actually see the carpet being lifted up. It's groomed the carpet a little bit better. It actually started pulling some of the dirt from the middle unclean section into the nozzle. So obviously the suction is having a greater effect. It's 100 air watts on max power. I believe it's only 28 on its regular settings. So, you know, it's knocking on for four times the suction when you use it on max. But then again, you are getting a lot less run time with maximum. Well, I might as well clean up the rest of this and then I'll be into my kitchen to see how well it cleans hard floors. Before I go into my kitchen, I will need to empty the Dyson V6 because, as you can see, I have gone just above the maximum fill line. So to give it a fair test, I will empty this first. Here's all the debris I've just removed from my carpet using the Dyson V6. But no matter how much I shake the machine, there's still some caught up inside between the bin and the shroud. So I'm going to have to get my hands in. Even, even I can't get my hand in, I can't get my finger in, so I would have to take, in order to give it a thorough clean, I'd have to take the bin off. A little bit fiddly. It worked fine before, there we go. So you need to take the bin off, and then you can get all this debris off. It's a little bit messy, obviously it's an extreme example. But that, that is one bugbear. I know some people have complained about this machine. Now that has been solved with the latest Dyson V8, I was going to say V6, the new V8 has a new bin emptying system. It is supposed to remove all the debris from around the shroud. So if that annoys you, I suggest you have a look at the Dyson V8 range. Okay now, so I've come into my kitchen and I've put down a load of flour and rolled oats onto the floor. Now a lot of vacuum cleaners struggle with very fine particles like flour, but let's see if the Dyson carbon fibre filaments do a better job. I'm going to use it on its regular setting because in my case this is a vinyl floor and I tend to find that if I use a vacuum with too much suction power the floor tends to stick to the nozzle and it doesn't clean very well. But I think on the regular setting we should have enough suction to remove this dirt. Okay, let's give it a go. Well, very impressive with the flour. Unfortunately, the rolled oats, it has snow ploughed a bit. So as you can see, the Dyson V6 has pushed most of the rolled oats in front of the nozzle rather than picking them up into the clear bin. And as I look in the bin, I can actually see a lot of the flour, but very few of the rolled oats. Anyway, because I don't like to leave a mess, I'm going to attempt to clean the rest of this up using the Dyson V6. Now 
Now, as you can see, it is still struggling with the larger particles. I can, of course, remove them by taking off the power head and actually using a straight suction nozzle to pick up the larger debris. This could be a quirk of my particular floor. If you've got wooden floors or tiled floors and not vinyl floors, you might find it performs a lot better. I just think it's a little bit unfair to say it's doing a very poor job because I have found a lot of the vacuum cleaners I test on this floor don't do so well with large particles, but I think the fault really is more with the floor rather than the vacuum. One job the Dyson V6 is really good at is stair cleaning because you can attach the motorised tool directly to the handheld unit so you hold in your hand a very powerful machine for cleaning your stairs with no cord. Now obviously if you want to give your stairs a really deep clean use max mode and you'll get six minutes of maximum suction power which should be more than enough time to clean the average staircase or even several staircases. What I like about the motorised head is just about the same width as a standard stair tread. So you can use the machine like this, or of course you can go in this direction. It doesn't really matter, whichever works for you. And of course, when you've cleaned the treads and risers with the motorised tool, you can attach the crevice tool to get into all the corners. And then you can click on the combination nozzle, extend the brush, and you have the perfect tool to clean the sides of your stairs. And of course you can connect any of the small tools to the end of the extension wand so you can reach up high for those pesky cobwebs. Apart from emptying the Dyson V6 on a regular basis before it goes above the max fill line, there are a few other maintenance tips you can do to make sure the cleaner operates at maximum efficiency. Once a month Dyson recommend cleaning the filter, which is located in here. You can run that under cold water, wring it out slightly, leave it to dry but not over any direct heat, 24 hours to dry and then you can pop it back in the cleaner. If you don't want to keep cleaning it, I often find you can use another vacuum cleaner, a suction cleaner, and just clean it with another machine. That saves having to wash it all the time, and then of course you can reuse it straight away without having to wait for the filter to dry. But it's easy to access, it's just located in the top of the cyclone unit. Periodically you may want to give the shroud a clean that's located inside the clear bin. To give us access to the shroud, we need to push down the red bin release lever once, Push it again and then you can remove the whole bin, you just need to jiggle it about a bit. There we go. So now you've got more access to the bin, you can wipe the bin out if you want to with a damp cloth, make sure it's thoroughly dry. Don't submerse it in water. And then you can clean the shroud here. You can use the actual dusting tool you get supplied with the machine, brush it like that. Or if you've got access to another vacuum cleaner, you can use a vacuum cleaner with a dusting tool and you'll be able to suck out any fine dust that's actually beyond the mesh filter screen. To relocate the bin, simply offer it to the machine from the front here. Make sure it goes over the little black lip at the front. Once you've got that in place, simply push it until it clicks and then you can close the dirt release door. From time to time you'll need to maintain your motorised cleaning head in order to keep it operating efficiently. And for that you just need a coin because we now need to gain access to the brush roll that as you can see has got quite a lot of pet hair wrapped around it. So using a coin we just turn this end cap here like this and then we can remove the cap and then the brush roll. and now we can remove all this hair. You can use a pair of scissors, pull it off, use another vacuum cleaner as well. You can suck all the other debris off to maintain it. You can also clean out this cavity here. I find it best to use a damp cloth, but not wringing wet. Just get a cloth, wring it out, a little bit of mild detergent, and you can wipe this out. Alternatively, you can use um, some wet wipe type things. So just clean all this out. You can check for any blockages while you're doing it. You can also gain a little bit more access. We've got another little 
access port here. So this comes off and as you can see we can get a bit more access to give it a thorough clean and to ensure it's not blocked. Okay, so I've got everything cleaned. I've removed all the hairs from around the brush roll. I just need to reassemble the motorised head. So I'll pop this access panel back on first, secure it with a coin, then I need to slide the brush roll in. Make sure it goes in this way first. You've got a spindle one end, that needs to be facing outwards and you just insert it this way into the cleaning head. Rotate it a bit until it's flush and then locate the end cap and use a coin to lock it into place. Well that's just about the end of my video demonstration for the Dyson V6 cordless vacuum cleaner. Okay, pros and cons. Pros, well it's very lightweight and being cordless of course it means you can clean from room to room without having to unplug and plug in all the time. It did a very good job on general dirt on my carpet. Not so good on the extreme pet hair test but a lot of vacuum cleaners struggle with that particular pet hair so I wasn't at all surprised by those results. It did a very good job on fine particles on my kitchen floor but it did struggle with the larger particles but as I said that could be a fault with the fact that I've got a vinyl floor that tends to get sucked into the nozzle of many vacuum cleaners that I test on it so it may perform better on other types of flooring so don't go by that demonstration. But it's lightweight as I said, it only takes three and a half hours to charge up but it has a short running time. 20 minutes is pretty good for normal setting but only six minutes on max that's you know it's okay for doing the quick cleanups that need the extra suction power but you're not going to get around your whole house in six minutes unless you live in a tiny apartment. Can this replace your full-size vacuum cleaner? In my opinion no unless you live in a tiny apartment. If you live in a larger house or even a normal sized house it is a good supplementary vacuum but I don't think it's a very good deep cleaner. You do need, still need, a mains powered vacuum to do a more thorough job. But for those in between cleans it's a very good machine and at the time of making this video it's the cheapest way of getting a Dyson stick cordless vac. This on the Dyson website though is $299.99 at the moment. I got this for £100 less than that but I still think £200 is quite a lot of money for this considering it's just the base model. So I hope you like this video, if you do please thumb me up, please check out my other videos, I've tested a lot more vacuum cleaners and other floor care appliances on my channel and uh, please stay tuned because there's lots more coming up. So until the next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.